Hi everyone, welcome to this video for Oxygen Not Included, which is all about the new Frosty Planet Pack DLC. In this video, I'm going to cover the most important content included with this pack, and my thoughts on whether it's worth getting. Now to start, it's important to point out that the Frosty Planet Pack, and likely any DLCs that follow, is different to the Spaced Out DLC, which was the first to be released. The Spaced Out DLC, as I covered in its own video, is really like a slightly different version of the game. Because it adds and reworks key mechanics, a save file made in either the base game or the Spaced Out DLC cannot be loaded in the other. But the Frosty Planet Pack is smaller than Spaced Out, and can be enabled or disabled on either of these two main versions. So with that understood, let's take a look at what's included in this pack. First up, as you can probably guess, is a frosty planet, which is called the Ceres Asteroid or Cluster. This is a fully dedicated planetoid, which is very cold, much like the old Rhyme Start. The Ceres planetoid features all of the three new biomes, which I'll look at shortly, but there is also a second way to include this new DLC. If you still want to use an existing asteroid or cluster start, you now have the option to scramble the frosty planet pack into these maps by toggling them in the world settings. These new biomes will then get mixed into the old maps, giving you access to the new content without the dedicated frosty start. Heading into a series start, you can also find a new dupe, Freya, with a new trait of cold resistance. This is important in the series start, since everything including the starting area is cold, and there are new cold damage mechanics that can slow or injure dupes now, which were introduced across all game versions. Note here that other dupes can also start with the cold resistance trait. And then, once into the game, this new start looks very different to the ones we are familiar with. The starting biome has a frosty style printing pod and a wood pile. And wood, formerly lumber, can also now be used to build things that were previously built with raw minerals or metal ores, such as ladders and some base items like outhouses and beds, which also come with unique frosty planet pack cosmetic blueprints. And this is a really good thing, because there's very little raw mineral to be found nearby. This biome is called the Ice Cave Biome, and comes with a lot of oxalite, snow, ice, and a new element, cinnabar ore, which can be used like other metal ores for building, or turned into the refined metal, mercury. In this start, there's no algae, and early oxygen is done by the Alveo Vera plant, that consumes carbon dioxide and ice to make oxalite. The oxalite can then be distributed around the base with the new oxalite sconces. You'll also find here a research portal that can be activated to give early research, including wood heaters that dupes can use to reheat themselves and to protect from the debuffs of being too cold. An ice liquefier is also added to get useful liquid water from ice, for sinks and advanced research and new snow and wood tiles add a lot of decorative flavour. Just be careful not to melt all your snow floors later on. Also in this biome, you'll find new critters and more new plants. Sherberries are this biome's muckroot, idyllic flowers are cold decorative plants, and wild phloxes can be found too. These cute fox-like critters eat pikeapple plants, which can also be used for dupe food. Then these critters excrete dirt, and grow antlers that can be sheared for wood. The second new biome is the Cool Pool biome, which appear further out and have the new Bamoth Critter and Plume Squash plants that they eat. Like the Pike Apple, Plume Squashes can be eaten by dupes or cooked, but are the Bamoth's food source too. These giant fluffy critters excrete Bamoth patties, which can be crushed into phosphorite and clay. Plus these critters can be sheared for reed fibre too, and drop a lot of meat on death. Then the third and final biome is the Nectar biome, so named because of the bonbon trees that make the new liquid Nectar. Needing quite a lot of light, which can be provided by the new Mercury lamp, these trees also make wood too. Nectar can be boiled or cooled to turn into sucrose and steam or ice, fed into a polymer press to make plastic without oil or drecos, or alternatively, fed to the last new critter, spigot seals. Spigot seals produce ethanol from the nectar, and when they die, give a new item called tallow. Tallow is an important ingredient in a lot of the new foods added, 
These include the never spoiling pemmican, as well as in the four new recipes in the also new deep fryer building, squash fries, nom noms, fish taco, and shellfish tempura. Finally, there's one more big addition in the geothermal project building. With this, you can input liquids to superheat them and get impurities out, so is useful for power generation and possibly some resource gathering. Plus, this building comes with one achievement to go with it. But having covered the main points of the new content, the really important question is, is the Frosty Planet pack worth getting? As always, this will depend on your personal situation, and I'll break down my answer into parts. If you've never played Oxygen Not Included, and are thinking about getting DLCs too, then my advice is to still just get the base game and see if you enjoy it. If you have played the base game and enjoy it, and are choosing between DLCs, then my recommendation here is to get the Spaced Out DLC first. Although it is a bit more expensive, it brings more significant changes, and to me is overall better value for money. Then, if you already own both the base game and Spaced Out, I would say this is worth getting for some extra flavour, particularly if you're really enjoying the game. As I said, I don't think it's as good value as Spaced Out, but I think it just about adds enough content to justify the price. But this isn't a hugely game-changing content pack, and it was never meant to be. And that's it, so I hope this has helped you understand what the Frosty Planet Pack DLC is, and if you do decide to get it, then I hope you enjoy all the new content to add to your base, and thanks for watching.